My name is Bjarne Decker and I'm responsible for the computer science laboratory. Our job, that is to put research to work. And our main challenge, that is how to program large real-time systems as efficiently as possible. And after many experiments, we decided that we had to move from conventional high-level languages such as uh, Ada, Chill, C++, etc., into the world of declarative programming. We also found out that the only way to do that, that was to develop our own language, uh, and a language which is called Erlang. In this video, we'll show you about the properties of this language and how it's been applied in large prototyping projects and also about the potentials of this language for the future. Declarative programming languages have several advantages over traditional languages. For example, programs in such languages are considerably shorter than the equivalent programs in imperative languages. Here, for example, is a program in C. And here is the equivalent program in Erlang. They also encourage clear programming styles. For example, an object-oriented programming style or the implementation of an abstract data type is simple in Erlang. Up to now, declarative programming languages, such as Prolog or ML, have not been used for real-time applications, so we've had to add a notion of concurrency and real-time to our language. We have also added a sophisticated error detection mechanism. This allows us to program robust real-time systems. Declarative programming languages are, of course, also symbolic, and we'll start by showing you the symbolic nature of the language in a typical telephony application. Erlang is a real-time declarative programming language. But in order to experiment with such languages, you need more than just a computer. You need a real-world application and real hardware to run it on. Let's go into our lab to see how we've done this. And this application is based on telephony. We have programmed an er Ericsson MD110 PABX, this PABX you see here, using Erlang. But that's not really quite true, because we've changed the standard MD110 very, very slightly, so that it communicates with the Sun workstation. And the Erlang programs we are going to be running are actually running on that Sun workstation, not on the PABX itself. This has been done by connecting the hardware signals through from the PABX to the workstation and vice versa. Here is our standard Erlang environment. We're running X windows on a Sun workstation. We have an Erlang interpreter window here and an Emacs editor window here. OK, let's just make a normal call just to see that the system works. Hello, Mike. Hello, Joe. System working? Seems to be. OK, fine. OK. Right, we're going to do that again, only this time we're going to look at some of the symbolic information that's available in the system while we're placing a call. I'm going to dial Mike again. One, six, seven. What we see here is a symbolic trace of the communications to and from the number analyzer. It first received the message analyze one. It returns the result get more digits. It then received the request to analyze the digits one, six, and again returns the result get more digits. And lastly, it received the request to analyze the digits one, six, seven. It then returned port 67, which signifies the hardware address of a telephone. I'll now dial an incorrect number. One, six, nine. Here again, we see a symbolic trace of the communications to and from the number analyzer. Again, it got the request to analyze the digit one and return the result get more digits. Then it got the request to analyze the digits one, six, and again returned the result get more digits. Finally, it, returned the, it got the request to analyze the digits one, six, nine, but this time it returned the result invalid, as, as this number is invalid. OK, we've just shown you one of the properties of the language that is a symbolic language and that symbolic information is always available. And I'd like to show you another property of the language, and that is how we handle errors. And in order to show you this, that I'm first going to make a perfectly normal call, as I did before, to Joe from this telephone. Hello, Joe. Hello, Mike. OK, I'm now going to leave this call set up from this phone here, and I'm going to make another phone call to Joe on his other telephone. But we'll use this phone here. Hello. Hello, Joe. OK, that's, uh, we've now made a call to Joe. I'm going to make a call to Robert. Hello, Robert. Hello, Mike. Well, I now have a call set up to Joe. Robert. Of course, I can put back and forth between the two of them. Hello, Joe. Hello, Mike. Hello, Robert. Hello, Mike. Well, now I'm going to do something that's different from wrong. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and put the calls in conference. So I'll put this up here, which is going to be in conference. And as you can see, my screen is starting to go wrong. We see here that something is going wrong. No, that's good. Here is the original error, which calls all the separate errors. It also calls the separate errors in the part, and they're all going to restart themselves. For example, here's one of the telephones, a button call, which crashed, or something restarted the working devices. We should not find out what calls the original error. We see that something was undefined. We also take a function and multi in the module feature, which is undefined. We should not make the module feature and find it here. We know the module feature, we'll find one call in the multi. Now I know this function will just copy the same function we saw here. We'll try to create it, save the file, load the end, and then see the works. We know that the element and load the end Let's see if we can see the same thing again. Let's see if we can see the same thing again. Let's see if we can see the same thing again. Let's see if we can see the same thing again. Let's see if we can see the same thing again. Let's see if we can see the same thing again. Let's see if we can see the same thing again. Let's see if we can see the same thing again. Let's see if we can see the same thing again. Let's see if we can see the same thing again. Let's see if we can see the same thing again. Let's see if we can see the same thing again. Let's see if we can see the
Ya, 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 ya,